Good morning, church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 4. This is the traditional passage by which we look at what is called the rapture of the church. Now, there are many Christians and people who claim to be Christ's followers that don't uh, agree with what we're going to be talking about, and they don't believe there is going to be a rapture. Uh, many of them don't even believe there's going to be a return of Jesus to the earth. But the scripture is very clear that when Jesus comes again, it's going to be in two phases because you're going to see that there's a great deal of difference between the rapture of the church and the second coming that is the return. Now, both of them are a part of the second coming of Jesus. It just happens in two phases. He comes first for his church, his saints, and receives them unto himself to go to heaven for a period of time. And then he second phase of that is he comes with his saints down to the earth. The first time he meets in the air, he, we meet him up in the air. He doesn't come down the earth. The second coming, he comes down to the earth. And so we're going to see that they're two very different events, but they're tied up in what is called the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about why God did it that way. So first of all, let's talk about the rapture. The great thing about God is he never gives us uh, a, a time when he hasn't given enough information for us to get what's going to happen next in world history if we can study our Bibles. I mean, even the, even the flood was predicted. It was preached. It was prophesied. It was declared uh, in many ways. Every major event, the destruction of Jerusalem, was talked about for 300 years before finally God did it. God gives us information ahead of time so that we know what's going to happen. And the next great event that's going to happen on God's calendar is called the rapture of the church. Now, when God uh, sent Jesus into the world, it was to build a church, to, to get a body of people, Jew and Gentile together in one body. Now, he poured out his Holy Spirit upon that church at Pentecost. The rapture is the removal of God's Holy Spirit. And when he removes the Holy Spirit, he removes the Christian because he's not going to leave us orphans. The Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts. And so the rapture is that moment in time when there's going to be a trumpet, there's going to be a voice of an archangel shout, and God is going to receive his people back up to himself. All Christians are going to leave the earth. That is called the rapture. It's described as a mystery that Paul reveals to us in chapter number 4 of 1 Thessalonians in verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are fallen asleep or dead, lest you have sorrows those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep with Jesus. Those saints that have died already, Jesus is going to bring them with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. God has revealed this to us. This is what God has told us is going to happen. That we who are alive and remain until the coming, that is the second coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who are asleep, those who have died. For the Lord himself, Jesus, will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So I thought that he was bringing them with him. No, he's bringing their soul and their spirit with him. But from the dust of the earth, from the ground, he's going to raise them up a brand new body, a glorified body. So they'll have a glorified body and they will, their soul and spirit will enter that glorified body. There'll be a body, soul, and spirit recreated in the image of God, completely healthy, happy, and holy. He says, For the Lord will descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, that is, people on the earth, still in these physical bodies we have right now, and remain, we shall be caught up together, that word for caught up together in the Latin is the word raptura. Rapture is how we pronounce it. And so that's where we get the word rapture. We're going to be caught up together with them, that is with these saints that have already died, with Jesus, who has brought these saints back with him and who's resurrected them a brand new body. 
And we're going to meet them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And so there's coming a time when this event is going to happen called the rapture of the church. And when this rapture happens, then we are going to be able to leave this earth. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, we are going to be received up into heaven with a brand new body. And we're going to be with Jesus. Now that's called the rapture of the church. Now next time we're going to talk about what happens after the rapture of the church to the saints and what's happening on the earth as well. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you again that we can trust in your uh, providential care of us in every way and every day. But Father, we thank you also that you've given us a, a glimpse into the future, that we are to be received by you in a new glorified body. I pray that that'll happen and that, Father, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. In his holy name we pray. Amen.